So we want to take the derivative of the function secant of x using the limit definition of the derivative. And the limit definition of the derivative says that you can take the derivative of, of a function by taking the limit as h approaches 0 for f of x plus an infinitely small increase in x, which will be denoted by h, subtract off your initial function and divide that entire thing by h. That is the limit definition of the derivative. We want to define our terms, which are f of x plus h. We already know our f of x is simply going to be uh, secant of x, so we'll write that down. f of x is equal to secant of x, and our f of x plus h is take our initial function and wherever it is that you see x, substitute it with x plus h. So this will become secant of x plus h. Now we're ready and we can plug it into the formula. We want to take the limit as h approaches 0 for f of x plus h, which is secant of x plus h. Limit as h approaches 0 for secant of x plus h minus our initial function, which is secant of x. All that divided by h. And I'd like to remind you that secant is simply the inverse of cosine. So what we can do in this case is rewrite this as 1 over cosine of x plus h minus 1 over cosine of x. So we want to take the limit as h approaches 0 for 1 over cosine of x plus h minus 1 over cosine of x divided by h. Now what we'd like to do is join these under a common denominator, so we will multiply cosine of x plus h over here and cosine of x by this first term. So we will take the limit as h approaches 0 for the numerator becomes cosine of x minus cosine of x plus h divided by cosine of x plus h multiplied by cosine of x. All of this divided by h. And what we know we can do now, based on previous algebra classes, is we can take the denominator of the numerator and drag it straight into the denominator. That way we can clean things up a little bit. So we'll take the limit as h approaches 0 for cosine of x minus cosine of x plus h over h multiplied by cosine of x plus h times cosine of x. So what we can do now is we can substitute cosine of x plus h for the addition of cosines formula which we have right over there. The cosine of x plus h is equal to the cosine of x times cosine of h minus the sine of x times sine of h. So we will make some space. If we wanted to substitute that in for cosine of x plus h, we would be left with the limit as h approaches 0 for cosine of x minus and then we're going to open our brackets because we'll need to distribute the negative sign later, cosine of x, cosine of h, minus sine of x times sine of h. Now let's go and distribute our negative sign very quickly. This will become, this will stay negative, and the negative will distribute and make this a positive. So all of this divided by h multiplied by cosine of x plus h multiplied by cosine of x. And what I'd like to do here is split this up into several different limits. I'd like to split it up into things where I can factor out a cosine of x and whatever is left over. So this will be two different limits altogether. So we'll take the limit as h approaches 0 for cosine of x minus cosine of x cosine of h over h multiplied by the cosine of x plus h times cosine of x. And because we're splitting this up into different limits, let's make some space over here. 
Here we have a plus sign, so this will be plus the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of x multiplied by sine of h divided by the same denominator, which is h times cosine of x plus h times cosine of x. So what we can do in this case is pull a cosine of x out of the numerator. Using factoring, we can factor limit as h approaches 0 for cosine of x multiplied by 1 minus cosine of h, all divided by h multiplied by cosine of x plus h times cosine of x. And one of the limits that I had discussed in one of my previous videos, I think it was the trigonometric limits video, is we can take for granted that the limit as h approaches 0 for 1 minus cosine of x, uh, cosine of h over h, as h approaches 0, strictly. h needs to be approaching 0, otherwise this is not valid. This entire thing will go straight to 0. So we know that this entire limit goes straight to 0. Then we want to add the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of x times sine of h over h times cosine of x plus h times cosine of x. And this is another one of those limits that we know we can take for granted, which is the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of h over h. Uh, wait, did I say that right? Limit as h approaches 0 for sine of h over h. This entire thing will go straight to 1. So all we'll be left with is sine of x over cosine of x plus h. So this will become the limit as h approaches 0 for sine of x over cosine of x plus h multiplied by cosine of x. And we know in this case that because h is approaching 0 and it's not going to give us any indeterminate forms if we plugged in 0 for h in the denominator, that we can simply cross this h out and it'll leave us with sine of x over cosine of x multiplied by cosine of x. So we'll be left with sine of x over cosine squared of x because cosine of x is being multiplied by itself. And last thing that we can do here is split this up into two different multiplications, which will be sine of x, or rather, let's, let's take a cosine of x out first. So we can split this up into 1 over cosine of x multiplied by sine of x over cosine of x. This is secant of x. This is tangent of x. So the derivative of secant of x using the limit definition of the derivative is secant x tangent x.